Well done. You scored us a, a 105 Series Alpha GTV. Absolutely. Unreal. Yeah, wonderful little car. Mm. Uh, look, probably on the slower end of the spectrum, Stu, cars that we've driven. Mm. But for today, it was quick. Great racing heritage. And as you know, one of the, the key things for our channel is they've got to be driver's cars. They've got to be pleasurable to drive, no matter what it is. This uh, is a driver's this car? Is one of the most pleasurable cars you could drive. Really? So involving. Steering's fantastic. The gearbox is just so sweet. You just have to shift it with the fingertips. Any Alpha engine from this era, particularly the 1750, is brilliant. Mm. The axle arrangement is great for a car of this weight. Mm -hmm. A great driver's car. So uh, we need to go find some cool roads to drive this on. A, I just happen to have one right here for you. Let's go. It's like we're going on holidays, mate. Yeah, we're in holiday mode, aren't we? It's very hard to get out of holiday mode this time of year in Australia, isn't it? Midway yeah. through January. It's nice to have something old and classic, isn't it, after a lot of modern cars recently. But a 1971 Alpha GTV. 105, 1750. Yeah, cool. So right from the start, let's thank Craig. Of course, thank you. I've uh, got a great collection of cars and uh, shared them with, uh, with us before. So it's been really, uh, it's really cool. I mean, Craig loves classic cars. And if you're a person that enjoys classic cars and you have a little bit of a collection going, this would nearly be mandatory, wouldn't it, one of these? Yeah. A GTV 105. I think it would be. The coolest thing about this car is that it's his daily driver. He Drives could have the Ferrari day. or yeah. any number of other cars. And this is the one he, yeah. he put it. Even in an Australian summer when it's 35 degrees and no air con. Yeah. Last couple of days I've been doing some work with Craig. I expected him to drive a nice air conditioned car out where we were working and uh, mm. turned up in this, which is actually very cool. And that, what work would that be, Mark? We're doing some coaching. Craig races cars around the world in various places. and. Uh, Yesterday we were coaching at uh, Navarra. It's a new getting, circuit in Spain. Getting him learning the track there and uh, he'll be racing there in a couple of months time. So it was great to sort of get him up to speed there with Ollie from Focus Driver Training there. Bit of a plug for those guys. Mm. Do a great job with the simulators there. And it's an, mm. it's an important part of, uh, of learning new circuits these days. Oh, there's your speed camera. Is that? Yeah. Is that the one where they pinged you at 55 k's an hour in a 50 zone? Yeah, that was in this car middle of last year. First speeding fine I've had for years, so yeah. The speedo here is in miles an hour. It's telling me we're doing 30 miles an hour, and you know, it's a really a bit of a guesstimate. You're doing what we call externalizing now. I am. You're, you're, you're finding things to blame well, when I'm it's a very experienced racing driver, of course I externalize. <laughs> you turned in on me. Yeah. The car's rubbish, it's not my fault, it's slow. Look, we're still doing 10 miles an hour and we're completely stationary, stopped. So they, and the Taco has a little, it's got a bit of a mind of its own. Yeah. Still got the original uh, Ye Jaeger um, dials in this car, which are just sensational. Yeah. It really is. It, I've had various friends who've had Alpha 33 and 75s and an Alpha Sud. Yep. Actually, I must tell you about my mate, as we came out of school, he bought an Alpha Sud, just a little 1200. And they're slow, right? They're, yeah, they're they revvy and they're really, really slow. So he put a turbo on it, which in the early days were turbos. And he got the biggest yeah. turbo he could find. And I swear the thing never actually came on boost. By the time it was revving out at around yeah. six grand, it just started to build a bit of boost. And then it just went whoosh, And then he had to change gear. We got blown off by a diesel Land Cruiser in there his turbo go. Alpha suit. So it was just the worst ever project. Yeah. One of my first times at the Nürburgring, one of the pros there took me out. He said, he "said you want to go out in my rental car?" And he said, "That's not a car. That's just a. That's an appliance. It's a commodity. It's not a car at all. Here's a real car, yeah, right. and it was an '80s vintage Alpha saloon, like this car with the live axle at the back. Yeah. And he absolutely chucked that thing around like you wouldn't believe. You would believe, but it was amazingly good. So the second thing Alphas are renowned for: firstly, the amazing engine, and secondly, the suspension and the ride. The way yeah. they." Particularly the rear, the way it works. It's really a very simple, basic setup, isn't it? But it works so well of a car of this weight. Yeah. And they move around a bit, but they're very controllable. Yeah. You know, there's so many things about this car that are just such a pleasure to drive. The gearbox is really positive. It's a quite a long throw. Mm. The synchros, if you try and shift too quickly, you can just feel the synchro sneak into gear. So you don't want to do that. You literally, it's one of those cars you just change, change with your fingertips. It does really benefit from a, a, a double clutch and a bit of a heel and toe on the downshift. Yep. Now these are the things that I guess it's a bit of a dying art, isn't it? It's not particularly fast, but it's really, it's really a pleasurable way to drive a car. Yeah. 
Let's just compare the size of the Alpha with a typical Aussie family car, a dual cab ute behind it. Crazy, eh? Is that what you call progress? The Alfa Romeo 105 series coupes were made for 15 years from 1963. Alfa sold 34,000 of these GTV 1750s between 67 and 72. This is a 71 model, the first with four headlights. Its all alloy four cylinder motor pumped out a healthy 120 horsepower at 5,500 revs and a muscly 182 newton meters at 3,000. In racing trim with some lumpy cams and a bit of tuning, you could pump them up to about 180, 190 horsepower, but that was about it without sacrificing all reliability. In the USA it got fuel injection, but thankfully the rest of the world got the much sexier Weber side draft carbies. The basic motor was in production for 40 years, from 1.3 up to 2 litres, that's how good it was. Suspension is fairly conventional, up front lower A arms with two upper links, and the rear is a live axle with trailing arms and coil springs, a simple arrangement that just seems to work really well on Alphas. This car has been stiffened up a bit with Bilstein on the back and Koenig on the front I think. Unusual for the day, all these GTVs had 5 speed manual boxes and solid disc brakes all round. There was no limited slip diff until the 2 litre arrived a year after this car. But this car does have the improved dual circuit brakes. But the skinny little 165 profile Pirelli or Michelin tyres gave terrific grip on the little 5.5 by 14 rims. I think this car must be running wider wheels though, it does have fat 195 profile Michelins on it. Point to point, these cars were fast too, mainly because they're so light and nimble. A shade over 1000 kilograms, tiny at just over 4 metres long, a low centre of gravity, great suspension geometry, and a powerful and light motor for its modest capacity. 50 years ago, that was how you won races. It's kind of like an oversized Lotus Elan, and just marginally more reliable. But on the other hand, the Lotus does have one advantage, fiberglass doesn't rust. You get so used to fuel injected cars, don't you? Yeah. And we're off. 122 horsepower, classic aluminium head, aluminium block, twin overhead cams, just your classic Sort of aircraft inspired light alloy motor on a twisty road with nobody round. Pure driving pleasure, Stu. Well, show me. Steering is fantastic once you've got a little bit of speed on. There's a bit of float there. Oops, there's a, there's bit a of... little bit of play in the steering there. Yeah. It does need a nice little uh, heel and toe on the downshift there. Yeah. This helps it go into gear beautifully. But it, it does feel really torquey, doesn't it? This one's a little stiffer than most. It's got Bill Steins in the rear, I believe, and it's a little firmer, which in a way is kind of a shame because they're, what's nice is the way the back moves. Yeah, the way they squat in the corners, don't yeah. they? They nearly look like when you see them on the track, they nearly on three wheels. Yeah. The front wheel in the air. Yeah, front yeah. wheel in the air. And look, one of the things as well with the, the right-hand drive Alpha 105s, that they have the old-school Volkswagen-style pedals coming out of the floor. Oh yeah, inch from below. Inch from the floor. The, the uh, of course, the majority of these were left-hand drive naturally. Yeah. Had them from the top. Now they, it does feel a bit weird, and the pedal is always at a bit of a weird angle on your foot. It just grips beautifully, doesn't it? You now through here, you just chuck it into the corner. We're yeah. not going fast, are we? We're only pretty doing about 60 kilometres an hour here. Probably feels a bit faster than that. Change nice and slow. The synchros take a, a moment to catch up. If you do try and shift too quick, it will. You will feel that synchro have a little snick on the way in. Yep. So it's a matter of just getting your timing right. So, you know, driving out a car like this is all about timing from a driver's point of view. But through there, nicely cambered corner. So rewarding. And whilst those, those uh, side draft webers are a little fluffy down low. Yeah. When you're pushing on a little bit, it's so responsive. But actually, tell you what, the brakes are good, Stu. I think I just need to warm up a little bit. I wonder if it's got non-standard pads. I would say so. But that really long, constant radius corner there, just driving through on the throttle, yeah. increasing the gas yeah. as you drive through. It just, I need to hang on the sides of the seat. Yeah, I've got, I've got the steering wheel. I'm okay. Honestly, people, you need to drive something like this at some point in your life. It'll yeah. put a smile on your face. It just could not do that. It's just 
just riding so beautifully yeah. considering it's stiffer than standard. It's still going yeah, really, absolutely. really nicely, isn't There's it? There's quite a few undulations on this road. It does handle them really well. Here we go, second gear. Down to second. 25k corner. Yeah, I definitely needed to hang on then. That's a nice note, doesn't it? That yeah, Alpha engine makes, note. It makes you smile. Who designed this? It wasn't Bertone Studio. Bertone. Bertone, yeah. Penned by Giorgetto Giugiaro. Giugiaro. Who really is responsible for some of the world's most beautiful cars, you yeah. have to say. And the Fiat Panda as well. Oh Notably also the <laughs> original Golf GTI. Um, he was only 22 at the time. 22. A remarkable uh, stylist, wasn't he? I mean, it is a beautiful car. The lines are just outstanding. Um, so many cars don't date that well. Look at it. Beautiful. Giugiaro was voted by his peers as the most influential car designer of the 20th century. It's fascinating to observe how his tastes have changed over the decades. Starting in the 60s with lovely rounded designs like this for Alpha. In the 70s he led the hard-edged folded paper school of car design, the Mark I Golf ultimately being his most successful design ever. From this era I think the Maserati Mirac and the De Tomaso Mangusta were pretty special. The 1980s started well enough with DeLorean, but to pay the bills he also churned out a lot of intensely dull stuff, like these. At some point in the 1990s he was looking in his bottom drawer for his steel ruler, found his long lost curved protractor instead, and things started to look up. Suddenly we had rounded cars again. Clearly there were still days when he left it to the work experience kid, resulting in aberrations like the Sanyong Rexton, which I think is a Korean word meaning crime against humanity. But trading on his reputation, this century he diversified into watches, trains, cameras, buses, furniture, architecture, and whatever this is. But occasionally designed a nice car, usually for Alfa Romeo, like the Brera. He'll probably always be best known for the 105 series Alfa, but for me, the highlight of Giugiaro design has to be the striking Maserati Bora of 1971. It's sitting a little lower at the rear than, than I recall. I think it might yeah, be a tad I'll lower sit a little bit like that. Um, that's the aftermarket springs yeah, I think. Yeah it's had a little bit of work done on it. If you look closely there's a few little bubbles of, yeah. of rust there here and there on this car. I, I don't think you'd find one without that. Yeah the sunroof, wonderful place for more water to congregate and rust oh, the yeah. roof out as well. Oh, yeah, so bloody sunroofs. You really yeah. don't want to drive them in the rain and um, as Craig found out you don't want to wash them too often do you? Yeah. So there are sills and then more sills and more sills there are and sills within all sills. these little secret places to hide the rust. Yeah, absolutely. So what, what classic car could we buy these days that's going to give the, seeing as we can't get one of these because they're just too rare, Yeah. What, what could we get? I mean you can get an MX-5, it's not, a, it's not a historic classic but it'll give you the same kind of fun factor. You know what, it probably will be one day, won't it? The original MX-5. Yeah, um, from 1990. Yeah, and plenty of them around. They don't rust, they're strong, They also reliable. don't have any air conditioning. Yeah, they don't have any air con and uh, but they are a great car, they're a classic car. There's Maybe no we idea. should review one. Hands up in the comments if you want uh, us to review an, an MX-5. Or wait. We know the answer, yes. Thank you. Yeah. Clear left. Seat belt's on. Right, safe as houses, nothing could possibly go wrong. Oh, I found a grab handle. I didn't know that was there. Is this what life's all about, Mark? Mid-summer, cicadas, yeah. you can hear them. Put out a few cicadas there. They can be quite deafening at times, can't they? Yeah. Yeah, I haven't really heard any all summer, so... It's... How are our instruments? Temperature's okay, oil pressure's good. Ready for the uh, radiator hose to blow yeah. off, as it, as it will at some stage. You do need to keep a little bit of an eye, eye on the gauges in this car, don't you? Yeah. Really hangs on nicely through there. A little bit of a ease off the gas, the weight comes back on the front, helps you to turn in. I mean, again, this is what makes this car such a great driver's car and why it was such a great racing car in its time. It's got a nicely cambered corner and you can feed the throttle in. It does reward a nice heel and toe downshift. A constant radius corner like that, just, just increasing the throttle as you go through. That's sweet, isn't it? Yeah, it loads up nicely. This road really suits it. It does. Let's see how the brakes are. Right, down to third, back on the gas. <laughs> it's pretty good, isn't it? Yeah, it's fun. 50 year old car. It does. Doesn't need, doesn't need a whole lot of horsepower. It's cool. Nice Aston. Nice. 
just like the one we reviewed. If you haven't seen our review of the Aston Martin DBS or the Vantage V12, check them out. They're up here. They say that the, you know, the 750 doesn't have as much torque as the 2 litre. I'm sure it doesn't, but yeah. the torque on this car is adequate, isn't yeah. it? It doesn't really need any more. What's surprising is how good the ride is, considering you're loading it up. It's very good. You can, you can feel it leaning on the outside. Yeah. There's just a little bump in the corner there. You feel that? You didn't upset it. That, if, if you that front wheel just sort of came off the ground a little bit. Yeah. You can just feel it. But it was on three wheels momentarily, but beautiful. Yeah. And that's what, kind of what it's designed to do. That's why they have this rear axle set up. But hang on a sec. Who are we? Mark is a race driving instructor. Whether it's setting lap records in GT cars in Japan or China, or his wins in Formula cars in Europe, or winning the Aston Martin Cup Championship. That's Mark. Me, I'm Stu. I'm not quite so well known, but I've owned and driven some pretty nice cars. I'm also a race driving coach, and way too old to be an internet sensation. Together, Mark and I are incarnation. So while we're stuck in traffic, let me talk about what's available for sale. I went looking worldwide, UK, America, all over Australia. I found about five or six in Australia. I found one in the UK that's asking £84,000 wow. and it's a race car, so that's $150,000 Australian. Would you buy any, any uh, 970s Alpha from the UK with the salt on the road uh, over there? Like yeah. Yeah. Well, on the other hand, it might have been given the full alcoholics treatment yeah. and they, they really do yeah. a nice job. Yeah. But, I, I mean, for that money. Yeah. And there's, there's one in Melbourne also asking $150,000. $150,000? Yeah. Wow. But I think one of the reasons the values have really gone up on, on this kind of car is there's just not many of them around anymore because most of them have fallen apart and yeah. are, are piles of rust. Random thought, maybe it's the rust that's making them valuable. I think it's contributing to the rarity, therefore the value, isn't it? Yeah. To find a good one. I don't think you'd ever find one that had no rust in it. Aren't quarter windows just the best invention? Yeah. You know, when you haven't got AC, and look, they work really well too, unlike mini they ones. They do, don't they? Yeah. It's a good mechanism. 50 years later, and that works smooth as, well. smooth as butter. Green light. Let's go. Yeah. That launch hub. Yeah. Well, it didn't really, but... It's just a little bit fluffy down low, isn't it? On the, on the tuning. Yeah. And the clutch takes right at the top, too. Yeah. There's one of those goddamn Teslas. Why would you have one of those? Hey, Mark, I bought a new car. Don't tell me you brought a Tesla, you've been threatening to buy one and I've been... I'm not going to tell you what it is, I'm not we're going to review anymore. it next week. That's coming up that's next fine. review. Let's find out. It is exciting. So it's obviously not a Tesla then? You said it's exciting? Sorry Tesla owners. I'm just going to sulk for a little while now. It's got to be an EV, Stuart, the way you've been banging on about them recently. <laughs> I have a serious loss of credibility if I didn't get an EV. You would do. Maybe the petrol is still flowing through my veins just a little bit. Uh, just a little bit. Last gasp. Vroom. And that was like a double shuffle in slow speed, wasn't it? It was, yeah. Probably didn't need to do it, but I just wanted to do it. The steering's wonderful, isn't it? I mean, a lovely light feel. It's very heavy when you're parking it, as you'd expect it. But on the road, there's not much, not too much play in it. There's a little bit of play there, but it's pretty good. That actually has a really nice weight to it. It may not be very fast, but it's faster than that Model S Tesla in front of us. Yeah. Um, a good measure of what these cars are worth is to look at Shannon's auctions, because the, the best examples end up there. And since 2006, I've seen seven or eight go through. $7,000 for this car. Yeah. And by 2020, $50,000. Last year, two of them went to auction. One of them passed in with bids around 75000 The other one sold for about $85,000. So right. that's the real value of what these are worth. My investment advice, go out and buy one. You won't find one. Just... We, we might be at the top of the market for the moment, but I do see these cars continuing to rise. Yeah, that sounds good, doesn't it? The early engines were quite toppy and didn't have a lot of torque. This, that's the 1600 and the 1300. And then the 750 came along and it's it's beautiful because they it's suddenly it had some torque as well and it was still smooth. Yeah. The later engine, the two litre, uh, isn't quite as smooth, but it obviously has more torque and power. But I, this I is the sweet spot. It is the, the sweet 1750. spot. I think so you're right. Yeah. Um, That's just purring there now. Yeah, yeah it needs at least 3,000 revs just to be sounding it a little does. decent. This gets a little fluffy down low as well with the carbs. 
Oh, they're Webbers. I love side draft Webbers. Wow, check out that view. This there is Australia, are. people. Well, I hope you enjoyed that viewer. Viewer or viewers? Well, hopefully. If you're new to the channel and you haven't seen our stuff before, I hope you enjoy it. We're just trying to be real and actually drive the cars. Yeah, he drives. I sit here and I crack dad jokes. But we like to have fun with our cars and, and it's all about the driving pleasure. And, and we're here to share it with you. If you never get to drive an SLS AMG Black Black Series, at least you can come with us for a little ride in one. That's the whole fun of it. And we're very fortunate to have a lot of generous friends that support us, aren't we, Stu, with their cars. Yep. yep. Thanks, of course, to Craig for letting us use his beautiful 105 GTV. We're very grateful. That, yeah. that was cool. See you next time. That person there, see? See all those people? Look at them all sitting there in front of their computers. Millions of them. Subscribe, please. We need to pay for our holidays. At least pay for a couple of memory chips for my cameras. That's all we need. Oh, hey, you made it right through to the end of the video. Congratulations. Thank you for watching. If you like what you see, please share it with your motoring friends. And above all, click the little subscribe thing down here so you can see the latest videos when we bring them out, hopefully each week. I look forward to seeing you soon.